Uh, thank you so much for uh, attending the Tech Talk today. It's really a pleasure on behalf of the Hexagon Robotics Division uh, to present you some insights about E.ON, our new humanoid robot that we've announced yesterday. I hope some of you have been in the keynote of Ola and then also in the afternoon session. Um, so today's presentation is a bit complementary to that and we'll uh, primarily talk about two things. So first of all, how E.ON is learning to locomote, basically to drive around and to move around. And in the second part, I'm going to show you a bit of the insights about how we teach the robots to manipulate by imitation learning. Um, I also learned that there is no Q&A session at the end, but if you're interested to ask a couple of questions, I'm going to stay uh, a couple minutes here, or you can also meet us at the booth over there uh, later on. But yeah, with that, um, I would just get it started. And um, in the first um, part, I would just recap a little bit what E.ON is about. Um, so it's really one of the differentiators that we have inside is uh, a lot of sensors that we've put into the head, into the upper chest area, but also other parts of the, of the robot. Um, it's sensors, it's cameras um, that allow us to perceive our environment, to navigate through the environment, and then also to uh, basically detect on what we can manipulate and interact with the environment. Uh, we do have quite some advanced edge compute in there. Uh, we've also announced some partnerships yesterday, and, and those are uh, actually going pretty much in the direction of, of supporting those AI capabilities. And uh, last but not least, uh, I think that's also one of the big inflection points we've seen over the last years. Uh, these powerful actuators are getting more available uh, these days, so it's, a, it's not yet um, very commoditized, but we see there's a huge trend towards available components um, around actuators, which is quite an important uh, aspect to keep the form factor reasonably sized. So with that short overview of, about E.ON, uh, I would dive into uh, locomotion. And you often hear the term reinforcement learning, or in short, RL. And um, I've prepared a couple of slides to show you a bit the idea behind reinforcement learning. So on the left side, um, it's typically called an agent. Uh, it's, it's basically a bare model of the robot, um, if you wish, uh, where, where this agent is being deployed into environments uh, on the right-hand side. And those environments um, could be real environments, but more conveniently, they are virtual environments, um, so in simulation. And uh, you can have your agents deployed in this environment, and then they learn um, by observation, and certain, of certain policies uh, get rewards. So in essence, it's a feedback loop. Uh, and your neural network just sits on the very left-hand side um, of, of that uh, space. One of the big advantages uh, to make that in the virtual world is um, you can scale it up very conveniently. And um, accelerated computing and GPUs have been a lot in the talks over the last years. And um, that's exactly what we've done also for um, E.ON. So in this video, you see uh, thousands of our robots learning to walk steps. Um, basically, we, we can train different uh, scenarios. Um, it's rolling, it's stepping over. And um, this takes about 10 to 14 hours on a single GPU, not even parallelized. And hours of GPU training translate basically into years of experience. And that also means that we can have very different objects, we can have ramps, we can have a gravel simulated uh, to a certain degree. And uh, I think it's a very powerful technique uh, going forward uh, in the long run, reinforcement learning. We've been using it primarily for locomotion for the time being. And once you've trained your system in the uh, virtual world, you've got to make sure that you, do, you deploy your simulation to reality. And I think that's where we have invested most uh, on our side to make sure the modeling of the actuators is accurate, also together with our partners, um, both NVIDIA and Maxon, um, and also getting the right uh, things out of the CAD model. So that means all the, the weights, the inertia, and so on, all these parameters. And uh, here you can see a video of one of our prototypes, um, basically also walking then steps and walking stairs. It's a hybrid policy, we train it so it rolls and it, it uh, locomotes upwards um, and downwards. It's actually quite fascinating when you see it. <laughs> and of course, this is like, this, um, this is like half a year old, um, and we're now continuing to improve that um, 
Uh, and it's, I think I often get also the question, um, is this relevant for industrial settings where you have only even floors? Um, and I mean, on one side, it's a fair point. But on the other side, that's, that's actually what makes these human needs unique. You have a, you have a very versatile capability. Uh, it may be not needed 99% of the time, but at one time you need to step over a cable, that you need to step over a stair or even a small step. Um, it's actually quite convenient and will differentiate against AGVs and AMRs. Uh, furthermore, we can add more complex scenarios. So this is a bit in, in the making, I would argue. So this is only a sneak uh, peek. So instead of having only these simple environments we train the robot in for locomoting, going over steps and stairs, uh, we can start bringing in some more uh, realistic models. And this is a, a part of our office, actually in Zurich, in Switzerland. And it's a, it's a digital twin representation that we can load into NVIDIA Omniverse. Uh, and this, is, I think, is also one of the very compelling tracks that we have with E.ON. This model was generated by our reality capture technology around the blk to go and RTC360, and then by Hexagon Digital Reality, a software. Um, basically, you, you get um, starting to get almost photorealistic digital twins. And so instead of only having the, 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 the locomotion, the forces in there, you, we are now starting to integrate the cameras into these reinforcement loops. And I think this is a very important step forward in order to get even more um, simulation data um, basically in there. On the right-hand side, you can see we even modeled our laser scanner, the AS1, that we've shown yesterday in the, in the car door demo uh, in the afternoon. On the second part, um, I would like to go into imitation learning, which is, uh, I would say, it's a bit of um, a different approach to reinforcement learning, but also in the long term, we see that there's good ways of combining those two um, together. Imitation learning, it's always, um, I think, um, it's, it's a very promising thing going forward of not to program the robot when you have actually some, some real life data. And one of the examples that we have here is the Apple Vision Pro um, that you see uh, on the right hand side. That is, that is basically providing the hand tracking, so the finger tracking. And these actions can be fed into the agent and into the environment, and the robot is replicating uh, these tasks. Um, and in essence, the, the perception, so all the cameras that are built into the robot, they feed back, they are being stored. And if you wish, this is also kind of a loop. Uh, it's a bit a different loop to the reinforcement learning. Um, and we can see it actually here in this video. So first of all, you see the Apple Vision Pro has lots of sensors around, and it's uh, tracking the hand here of our colleague um, in, in the office, in the lab. And the motion is then being replicated from the hand onto the robot, um, and it allows it to basically um, pick in place uh, objects by human instructions. And these, um, these trainings that we do, we, we do about 30 to 40 runs per, per part uh, to teach the robot. Uh, and then we train a small neural network um, onto that. And we're going to see that a bit later. But, um, and so we take the perception and the actions that, are, that we collected um, during the training. Uh, we, we train this um, ACT policy, which is an action chunk transformer. And then uh, we, we can bring this um, policy onto the robot. And that is also a very, um, a very promising way forward then to later on fine tune and add data to these large models, these foundation models um, if, if that you often hear. Or um, nowadays, they're also called vision language action models um, further down the road. So here you can see a, a deployment basically um, of this policy, replaying, uh, placing six motors. We've also been uh, taking some challenging parts which are quite reflective and which are quite shiny um, because uh, each, each of these parts um, yeah, requires some training and uh, is, is, a good, uh, is a good challenging scenario uh, going forward. We're also currently working on some automated setups um, that we can basically multiply this uh, onto, onto uh, more of those uh, aeons that we have in Zurich. 
And um, also going forward, uh, the idea is that uh, this, this kind of unique parts will then add on to these large language, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, these foundation models, uh, because those basically don't really know that parts or what these are. And in fact, it's parts of the, the actuators that are built inside the, the robot um, there. So there's uh, three, three takeaway messages, um, uh, and I, will, I would like to go a little bit um, into detail for those three um, to today. So first of all, we see there's really an inflection point in, in um, providing physical AI uh, through simulation. So what, what you've seen in the very first part of the presentation, uh, this is something that takes typically a week or two. Uh, so when the Aeon, uh, when, we, when we build it up the first time, the, the current version, uh, we build it up in, uh, in middle of March. We got all the components in for the latest generation, and it took us about two to three weeks to fine tune these models to go through different trainings, and the robot was walking going upstairs and, and, and really driving around. So it's, it's, it's cutting down those, those uh, cycle times from months really to, to weeks. And I think this is a very, very powerful messaging. Uh, going forward, there's, there's uh, even more with perception in the loop um, coming. Um, and it, it, at some point, it really gets how, how fast can you scale those GPUs uh, on your cloud instances. The second one is those digital twins um, for, for virtual training and deployment. We also think that there's a, a, a very intriguing path forwards uh, before you go with the robot to actual physical locations to deploy it, to train it in your virtual models. Um, a good example is the, the demonstration we gave yesterday, both in the keynote for, by Ola and Arnaud. Um, since we're all based in Zurich, in Switzerland, uh, we didn't have access to the stage, um, only very lately. But we created a 3D model of the stage, and we were basically already programming all the, the paths and teaching the robot um, uh, of how these demos are executed. Um, and so we, we, we'd have a, a lot of scenarios going on, what could go wrong, what could go right. And this is, um, um, we actually use um, already today, we use these, these virtual environments in our CI, CD pipeline. So we have continuous uh, integration and deployment on the software side of things. And uh, it's, a, it's a very powerful technique also to to train your, to even when you commit code, when you, when you bring new code to the code base, to test the robot in the virtual space um, there. And then uh, the last message of today, the there is more and more imitation learning coming. Um, and that's also a differentiator to what wasn't around two, three years ago. So basically that you don't have to train the, uh, program the robot, but only an operator who is skilled can show the robot what to do. Currently, it, it takes like 30 to 40 iterations, as we said. Um, but we're quite confident that also mixing in uh, synthetic data from simulation, we can bring that further down and, and make it more robust uh, going forward. Uh, but no code, no programming, very, very important to scale up those uh, general purpose robots in the future. Uh, with that, uh, I would really like to thank the broader team. So uh, we have a wonderful team in Zurich, uh, and we have a wonderful team here. Uh, Many of them are at the booth, uh, so if, you, if you're interested in, in seeing more of the robot, if you haven't yet, uh, please go over there um, and try to ask them good questions, <laughs> obviously. Um, and then I would also like to highlight two sessions uh, today. Um, in the afternoon, or shortly after lunch, um, there is a, a nice um, talk, actually here, I think, in the Theater One, uh, by Spencer Huang from NVIDIA. Um, he's going also into robotics and automation. Um, so I, I'd really recommend to attend his tech talk as well. And then in the afternoon, there's going to be a panel discussion uh, with also quite a few remarkable speakers uh, on the line. As said, we have a, about every 15 minutes a demonstration at our booth. And also, if you want to get in contact with us, I hope this QR code works on the screen resolution <laughs> to, to, to detect it. Um, but you can uh, basically go to robotics.hexagon.com there's a, there's a sign up, or you can just write uh, to this email, uh, or just try to catch up at the booth or anywhere uh, in the zone today and tomorrow morning. Yeah, and with that, I would like to thank you for attending the talk, and I hope it was interesting and gave you some insights uh, of how Eon learns to locomote and to manipulate. Thank you so much.